Since the age of civilization, humans has always pushed towards the gaps that has been hindering to their growth in the long run. So we can start with going back to let's say 1000 years and see that how humans have been pushing towards reducing this gap in the growth. Firstly, in the somewhere in 14th century, we saw a rise in the press machines. Before the rise of press machines, knowledge was used to be only for the elites. Knowledge was only written on the clays, on the tablets, on the sculpture, passed one hand to another, and that's how the knowledge has been confined to a group. Once the press machine has been invented, this entire shift of knowledge has been disrupted. Now each sector, each era, and everyone has equal access to the knowledge. And this was the first mind-blowing disruption towards the innovation. Then, somewhere in the 18th century, we saw the power machine, the steam engines, been invented. This has been another crucial invention of the civilization. Earlier, either humans leading to the slaveries, colonizations, and other uh, streams for leads to the power of this entire era. But now, with the steam engines, a lot of machines and a lot of powers can be generated and can be utilized for this benefit of human civilization. Then, maybe our favorite one, the birth of internet. The information is, this is how it's completely changed how information has been started to share all across the world. Now people doesn't require to wait for one inventions to be done or people doesn't require to share any piece of information. They can have it in the seconds and this has been truly disrupted. We see that all of these disruptions happened not over the midnight. Let's look at the latest invention of internet which we saw and how it has been evolved. So internet started with the ARPANET. Before ARPANET there has been a lot of developments been done on how the in communications among computers can be done. ARPANET was the first utilization where actually the communication has started and it was somewhere in 1969. After that it took almost 12 to 15 years so that someone it came to reach to the public domain and then it finally gained the known very well famous name of internet. Then it took another 10 years to go into the mainstream to see how we can realize the potential of internet, how the different applications can be built, how medicals, how uh, life sciences, how military and everybody can utilize this internet for the benefits of larger good. And then in the next 10 years, we saw the rise of today all these internets that has been coming in. The Facebooks of the world, Google, Twitter, WhatsApp, everything that's been rising up. So overall, there is always a, not a, not, there is not always a shift in the overnight era, but it always took place smoothly over the time. And we see that this disruption is possible with the clear mindset and the clear utilization of the technology. Right now, in, we are living in the internet age. We are in an information age. We are seeing that how the internet has been changed from just a static form of text to now a dynamic, now interactive, and then we are talking about internet of things when this internet will actually start to talk to us. With the increase in the information age, we are seeing a lot of centralization that has started happening towards some central authorities, some central bodies, and a lot of intermediaries has raised. Now with this information age has been started up, a lot of different companies has been started to mitigate the trust of how do you actually rely on information that has been shared. We have seen over the last 10 years, a lot of activities, particularly in the financial sector of the world, has been happening, which has always 
asked us again this question, are we really there enough to trust this information is how we see it? The 2008 financial crisis was one era when we see the entire world has almost came to a world still. This was the first, this was the first case of the 20th century, 21st century, when we see that information is can actually be very much harmful when the central, how the level of centralization has been happening. And this is how we have now seen that there is a rise in the trust gap today. Now, how we are going to mitigate this new risk that has been coming up? Now, it's coming difficult in the light of some recent activities that how we are actually going to trust those intermediaries, how we are going to trust these central bodies who we have been dealing with in the financial transaction. And this is where a new solution has started coming up, which has the potential, which has came up with a theory, and has started in the application that how we can reduce the trust gap so that, again, an entire shift of era can be disrupted. So I'm talking about blockchain. Blockchain, I will stick it to the layman's term. Let's understand blockchain as a magical book. A book who can, which copy can everyone have for free. Now, the magical about this book is that anyone can write any line of text in this book, and that line of text will magically appear on every one other copies of the books. This is truly magical about this book. Now, assume this line of text which I am writing, consider this as a financial transaction where you can create new transaction, where you can transfer money to someone or where you can transfer some assets to someone. Whenever you are transferring some asset, you are writing it in your own book, but that line of text is automatically appearing in every other copies of that book. What magical about this book is, as well is that this book will automatically reject a wrong transaction that has been done. So let's say that you have a lack of funds or you, have, you don't have the proper authorization to do that transaction, the book will automatically reject that particular line of text or that particular transaction. This is what blockchain is. Cryptography is what makes this entire magic thing possible. So from the blockchain, how we are seeing a lot of different applications that has been coming up and a lot of different potential theories we are making up to sift this entire paradigm of the trust value. So let's talk about the evolution of blockchain. We saw the first blockchain application, Bitcoin, somewhere in 2008. It was a simple idea of how a money can be created without any central regulation, any central authorization. I'm sure by now you, you guys should surely have heard of Bitcoin. These are very dramatic in the news. This was the one application which soon that actually Bitcoin or the underlying technology Blockchain is not just some fash, but actually it can be implemented. As of today, we have a very large market cap on Bitcoin as well as on other cryptocurrencies that has been there today. Then, somewhere in 2014-15, we saw the next era of distributed blockchain technology coming in. That is the Ethereum technology. What Ethereum equipped is that not only to the cryptocurrency, you can also build public decentralized applications such as land registry programs, benefit distribution, and a lot more on the public blockchains. This is going to be a distributed ledger, not necessarily regulated by a central authority, but is still working flawlessly. However, as I soon for the internet, the disruption is not going to happen only in the 10 years of timeline that has been saw for the blockchain. We are still evolving. We are now seeing the third generations of blockchain coming up. These third generation of blockchain talks about how different blockchain networks 
can talk with each other how different applications can talk with each other how different businesses and enterprises who has already adopted a use information into the industry as in from the computer science how they will shift to adopt the blockchain in the longer run and this is where the two major potential things comes up number one the blockchains need to be the business ready a blockchain is a consensus mechanism tool where it is controlled by nobody but is accessible to be everybody and everybody is the judge now different businesses or for different use cases for cryptocurrency for for land registry programs or for the public distribution of goods we have different business consensus mechanism it's the same thing like when internet was rising up the same protocol which we used to send emails and the protocol which we used to watch youtube is very different similarly blockchain has started coming up with different protocols for different business requirement which can suit for different data standards and different industry needs there can be different plugins there can be different blockchain consensus methodology for financial services industry there can be different blockchain methodology for supply chain industry and other same for other government and e procedures now coming to the last part how we are going to make it into the mainstream adoption so how we are seeing is that today two things have widely captured the world one are the physical servers second newly coming cloud servers on the physical servers like hp's non stop os solutions how we are working is that these legacy hardwares or these legacy systems can be inbuilt with the blockchain capability so that any infrastructure that requires to use blockchain can easily adopt it without any change in their existing infrastructure another way to make it live for the normal developers or for the mainstream masses we can use it on the cloud so how ibm cloud is adopting ox laser so that we can quickly deploy a network and we can access it we can use it we can build our business logic for students we can play around with it we can see what are the different benefits that can be done through a decentralized open source activity and so we can see that how different businesses can be transferred you just trust me how the blockchain is moving all the coming industry is in a challenge with its blockchain version of itself everything can be disrupted everything can be changed and can be improved with the power of blockchain when coming up with the application the blockchain has given us again an era when something like google facebook whatsapp and twitter can be created it can be a better version it can be a more trusted version and it can be a version that will reduce the trust gap in the society thank you so much